Welcome to the Institute of Advanced Study. You are here in person. We are very delighted to see you, and I think everyone is already very lively um, in the room. And if you are just beginning to join us um, uh, online, welcome to the Institute. My name is Marcia Meskman. I'm the director of the Institute of Advanced Studies. I have a couple of um, housekeeping items, and then we're going to start this work um, roundtable in earnest. Um, if you are joining us online, you will note that on the bottom of your screen, you have both a chat and a Q&A function. We monitor that throughout, so there will be time to be able to ask questions and to feed into the discussion um, uh, today. So please do use that. So there will be people looking at that, and we'll make sure that that happens. You'll also have been giving up quite a lot of your time if you're joining us online, and we are very, very delighted that you would um, be so uh, uh, amenable as to do that. There will be a break, and that will be signaled very carefully by our chairs today. So there will be a moment for a comfort break. And if at any point um, your uh, your online connection breaks out or anything, feel free to just to rejoin. It's absolutely fine from the um, perspective of the room. Uh, likewise, room, we will have a break. So there will be a moment for a comfort break. And that will also be signaling a time to be able to join into the conversation. But at the moment, we will open with the dialogue from here. But it is my great pleasure to say a few words um, to launch this the theme for 23-24, gestation, bodies, technologies, ecologies, and justice. Um, it is a real delight, and it has been wonderful to be working with um, a team who so brilliantly curated this. Pandora Siparek is here, Anna Christina Susina, who is um, at Loughborough, London. Um, and the two chairs today, Eleanor Morgan and Emma Pullen, to whom I will hand over quite soon, um, have done an absolutely amazing job in bringing this together. And this is the launch event for this, but we will also be having a follow-up event in May. So I'm really hoping that people will continue the dialogue through that. Welcome, colleagues. I also want to give some thanks to the IAS team because Laura Dale, Kieran Teasdale, Connor Higgins, and especially um, our doctoral leader, Sophie Milt, Without whom nothing happens at the IAS, and um, it is really important that they be acknowledged for all the unbelievable work that they do here on, on a regular daily basis. The IAS um, was launched in 2017 um, with its first two annual themes, communication and migration. Um, there have subsequently been 10 themes um, held here, and we have, and I counted, hosted a dozen dozen international fellows mm -hmm. through their 10 themes, a gross, but that is a, an unfortunate collective noun for <laughs> our um, fantastic and extraordinary international fellows, but they have come to us from across um, the world and they have come to us from across all disciplines. So we are now launching the 11th of our annual themes and we are going to be you know, thrilled over the course of this year to be welcoming a range of people at their very best, IES annual themes provide an absolutely ex exceptional forum for bringing outstanding international scholars into dialogue with LU colleagues, develop ideas, research projects, and long-lasting collaborative relationships on what we see as being incredibly important topics of the day. Today is no different. Um, we um, are welcoming today Isabella Dornelis, Mary Bissell, Holly Thorpe, Hideyasu Shimatsu as international fellows in dialogue with colleagues Victoria Brown, Emily Frederick, and chaired by colleagues um, from the theme lead. So this is again, one of these dialogues where we are really hoping that we will have long lasting and really um, exceptional dialogue and research partnerships from this. On the theme of gestation, to say something about why we see this as so um, critical and that's, that's such an interesting theme, I'm going to um, beg your indulgence for a moment. On the screen is a work, Ekbalik Garden, Winter or Winter Garden sometimes, by Christine Borland, made in 2001. Um, it was done for a Melbourne festival. It's now been acquired by the Art Gallery of New South Wales. Um, this is a work which has lingered with me for over 20 years. I published on this work in 2003 um, and saw it in 2001 when it was there. So it's a really kind of fascinating piece. It is a collection of slumped glass beakers. They're somewhere between specimen jars and wombs. They're womb-like forms. They're filled with alcohol and bleach specimens of Penny Royal. And those who in some way listen either to Nirvana songs, Penny Royal, um, or in, 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 a, in a more uh, 
kind of colloquial form, are aware that there is a British version of this, Monta Collegium, but there is also, and this is the Australian native version because this was being shown in Australia, um, Mintha Saturiopis, long been known by women as an abortifacient patient plant. Um, and this particular version was known by indigenous women. And as, and as British colonials came, they became very aware of this particular species, of this particular herd. Um, like uh, many uh, uh, interesting <laughs> dynamic issues around plants, around species, around understanding, and like the work, for example, of Maria Sibylla Marian, who in the 17th century also documented Flos pavonis, or the so-called um, peacock flower, again, known by both enslaved and indigenous women across the Caribbean to ensure that they could control their fertility and not give birth to children in slavery. This is a very vexed and interesting area of a series of competing forms of knowledge. I was interested when I first read about this in the notion of corporeal theory, feminist new materialism, colonial cultural extraction, and knowledge is in vibrant and more than human worlds and the way in which materiality speaks to those things. Um, we can talk here today, and I'm hoping and across the theme of the European collection of specimens, including humans from around the world, an increasingly masculine medicalized um, professional establishment and the histories of that, the possibility for thinking very critically about intelligent plants as well and forests, different kinds of knowledge systems, indigenous enslaved um, and settler alike, the way in which women's knowledges circulate or don't circulate, biopower control, and as well as that, a vibrant cosmos and the interaction between humans and non-humans within an ecology of materialism. Um, I mention this and beg your indulgence for this moment to look at this plant because it is it was that remarkable combination that enticed us to choose this theme over the course of the year. The colleagues who brought this together understood those connections and are going to be making that. Um, and so I launch with a you know bottle against the, the deck, this annual theme, um, and say that I'm very, very hopeful and excited to um, meet the people on the panel. And I'm sure that they will be doing justice to this amazing um, contribution uh, to the way in which we think about knowledge is. Over to you. Thank you so much, Marsha, and welcome everyone to this afternoon's roundtable focusing on gestations, bodies, and technologies. Uh, my name is Anne Morgan. I'm a senior lecturer in fine arts here at Loughborough and one of the co leads for this theme, along with my colleagues, uh, Pandora Sifra, who's wearing a lovely orange sweater there, indeed, and Anna Christina Sidino. This is the first of two week-long events around gestation, and the second will focus on justice and ecologies, and will take place mid-May at uh, the Loughborough London campus. So I do um, urge you to have a look at the details in line with that um, of the events and speakers who will be joining us in May. So my interest in gestation uh, focuses on the many creatures involved in fertility drugs, and this includes frogs, toads, horses, hamsters, and also hundreds of Italian nuns who very kindly donated their urine to create fertility drugs. And it's something of this complexity that links with the areas we'll be discussing today. So bodies, human, non-human, and more than human, and technologies, historical, current and future. And with this in mind, I would like to welcome our amazing speakers today. Uh, Dr. Isabella Gomelis from the Max Planck Institute of the History of Science. Dr. Victoria Brown from the School of Social Sciences and Humanities here at Loughborough. Professor Mary Purcell from John Hopkins University. Professor Holly Thorpe from the University of Waikato. Dr. Emily Pederick from the School of Sport, Exercise and Health Sciences here at Loughborough, and Professor Hideyasu Shimatsu from Kitisato University. Welcome. I'd like to hand over to my colleague, Emma Pullen, who will run through the schedule for today. 
Okay. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks, Elle, and thanks, Marsha, for the fab introduction. <laughs> we were thinking about how to introduce, and uh, you just did it so well, so thank you. Um, my name is uh, Dr. Emma Pullen. I'm a senior lecturer in the School of Sport, Exercise and Health Sciences. Um, so I, yeah, my interest in, in, in gestation, how I ended up being involved uh, in STEAM was um, through sort of my recent work, which has explored um, the experiences of pregnancy and uh, fertility health um, in uh, female athletes in kind of high performance sports, um, a place where bodies and technologies uh, come together. And in doing so, um, I was drawn to uh, feminist and materialism, so I dug deep into the kind of body of work. Uh, and so it just felt, um, you know, when, when we started talking about this, uh, this uh, IS theme, it just felt like it was a really great opportunity to uh, explore some of those things and kind of think about some of those, those things uh, with, with some excellent um, international colleagues. So um, that is uh, my interest uh, in this. And um, just want to uh, run through the schedule before we, before we get going. Um, so as you can see on the, on the, on the screen there, um, we'll have presentations uh, from each of our um, scholars, um, about 10 to 15 minutes, uh, and they'll introduce themselves and talk a bit about their work. Um, and then we'll take <clears throat> a short break um, where we hope that um, through the introductions, it kind of invites conversations within that break, within that break, and think about some of the kind of things that we've spoken about and the kind of intersections that, that come through um, the presentations. Um, and then we will uh, come back uh, about quarter past three and we'll start a uh, kind of discussion with fellows, with the audience, um, around some key kind of areas uh, that, that, that have emerged uh, in our conversations with, with the scholars over the last few days. Um, and we'll, as you'll see, we'll emerge in their sort of uh, opening remarks. So um, without further ado, uh, I will, um, yeah. <clears throat> Welcome everybody and hand over to Isabella for, um, yeah, get, get us going. <laughs> 